Hello. Hi. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> uh, they said this did not have to be professional quality, so uh, there's no so danger it's, of that. It's not going to be. <laughs> um, I'm Gwenda Bond, and this is. I'm Christopher Rowe. <laughs> we are married and thus quarantining together. Yeah, we're um, married to each other. <laughs> and uh, we have about 15 minutes here, so we will we'll count down. Well, it's like a it's like a um, a ticking clock in a story. Like you know, when something's gonna go off, or there's a certain amount of time before you have to cut the blue wire and that kind of thing. Hopefully there will not be an explosion <laughs> at the end of this video. Uh, there might be a border collie or two though, or some That's cats. That's a good point. We, um, have, we have three dogs and two cats, and there, there's a very high possibility that at least one of them will attempt to make a guest, special guest appearance in this video. So should we introduce each other maybe? Because that's more interesting than introducing yourself. Sounds good to me. I'll go first. <laughs> okay. This is Gwenda Bond, New York Times bestselling author of Stranger Things, Suspicious Minds. And that is Stranger Things, the television <laughs> show, which some of you older kids might be aware of. I mean, all of you are probably aware of it. Uh, it's kind of a show for adults, but... She also wrote a bunch. She also wrote three books about Lois Lane, Superman's girlfriend. And All these are behind us, <clears throat> and the, our books uh, together and apart are behind on the shelves behind us. And in total, she's written fourteen <laughs> books. I don't know, <laughs> uh, including comics and radio scripts, or rather podcast scripts, and all kinds of stuff. And like I said, she's a very successful and well-known writer. Her books have been translated into dozens of languages around the world. You're there like, we don't care. <laughs> anyway, and this is Christopher Rowe. Um, he is also a very well-known, successful writer. Um, he mostly writes short stories, which maybe you guys read some of those for class. I did when I was in your grades. Um, way back when. And the, yes, we, we would be read by candlelight um, instead of our phones. And uh, he has been the finalist for a number of awards. Um, the Hugo, the Nebula, um, the Newcomb Fancy Literary Awards and Science Fiction Awards. Uh, and he's got two novellas coming out from Tor.com in the next couple of years. And we wrote a couple, and he also has written uh, lots of gaming. If any of you guys are role-playing gamers, he has done a lot of work for role-playing game supplements um, for things like Star Wars uh, and Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, uh, is that about cover it? And you're working on a novel. And we also co-wrote two books together, which is why we're here to talk to you. One, two. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so hopefully um, all you guys will have already received or will soon receive a copy of Supernormal Sleuthing Service Volume 1, The Lost Legacy. And uh, if you really enjoy that... Our border collie just brought us a ball. That was the noise that you heard. <laughs> uh, if you really enjoy that, you can talk to your parents or other folks that give you gifts about getting Volume 2, The Sphinx's Sister. The Sphinx's Secret. Or when you're back in uh, real in-person school, your library or a librarian. Yeah. But today we're mainly going to talk about the first one, uh, since that's the one that you'll be able to read. This is Phoebe. Phoebe is the most easygoing cat in the world. <laughs> and um, she likes to go to sleep on Gwenda's head. It's Actually, <laughs> since you're probably curious, before we go get into the book and how we wrote it together and everything... Let's tell you about our pets, because people always know about <laughs> people always want to know about our pets. I'm afraid we will mess up the camera if we try and pan to them. Well, we won't we won't show them unless they come and get in our laps like Phoebe just has. <laughs> All right, we have three dogs. We'll start with them. The oldest dog we've had uh, have and we've had him for fifteen years. Fifteen years is named Puck. P U C K. And Puck is a character in a William Shakespeare play called The Midsummer Night's Dream. And the adjective Puckish. Uh, means that you're somebody who's a little, whoa. There's an Izzy, sort of. That's, nope. oh, you just uh. got, I told you not to try that. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> puckish means like something like, oh, funny and tricky and sarcastic and a little bit of smart aleck. And puck is some of those things. 
but mainly he's a grumpy old man now. <laughs> he's uh, kind of small we and he's probably, red and brown. We probably shouldn't spend most of the video talking about, about pup. Pets. All right. Anyway, <laughs> dog number two, Izzy Isabel. She's part Australian Shepherd and part Border Collie, which means that she likes to herd the cats and us and the other dogs. And finally, our newest dog is Sally, who is a full-blooded Border Collie. And Border Collies are supposed to be the smartest dogs in the world, but she has not yet proven that to us. We have two cats. First, we have Stella, who is a cat called a snowshoe cat, which is a special kind of Siamese cat. She just walked in on A special cue. kind of Siamese cat, if you want, if you know why that is. And this, of course, is Phoebe, our newest pet. She is either a domestic long hair or a domestic short hair mixed with Maine Coon, which are the biggest house cats. She's pretty big, she's very furry, and she's very friendly. You know, I do actually think we can segue this back to what we were meant to be talking about. <laughs> Or we did, uh, although when we do uh, in-person visits, we do actually usually show pictures of our pets. Um, Who doesn't like and pets? And they are big collaborators. Like, especially when you're a writer uh, that works at home full-time alone, uh, they are your constant companion and inspiration. Uh, and I think in the Supernormal Sleuthing Service books, we wanted to create this big world where we could draw from all the different mythologies that we wanted. We wanted to create lots of creatures and friends. Uh, for our cast of characters who um, solve mysteries in this hotel where monsters stay when they go to uh, New York City. Yeah, that's basically the first idea we had. Um, you, guys, you guys are familiar <laughs> with mythology, right? Through the Percy Jackson books by Rick Riordan. Um, that's like Egyptian myths and They're Greek like, myths. They're like, duh, dude. We okay, know all know about all. mythology. All right. <laughs> so you know all about mythology. So we took creatures and characters from every mythology we could think of from all over the world and baby is shedding <laughs> and uh we thought to ourselves where would they stay when they go to new york city because it seems pretty obvious that mythological creatures and characters would want to go to new york city at some point so we invented a hotel called the new harmonia which is staffed by humans but also by monsters and supernatural or as, elevators. as we call them in our series, super normal. Super normal. Because they're not, they don't see themselves as monsters. They they're just them. different. They're just not humans, mostly. Um, you want to show them the octagon symbol? Oh, yeah. It's better in this one. And then we can talk about how we collaborated. Um, so, have you guys ever heard of the United Nations? UN? Uh, that's a... If you don't know it. Or the Knights of the Round Table. Either one is a good reference point for this. Right. So in our um, in our world. And you'll see this in your copies of your book that you have. In our world, all of the supernormal creatures are divided into eight, um, eight different groups. Okay. Uh, including humanity, which is its own group. But... Uh, they include the furred folk, F-U-R-R-E-D. That would be any kind of creature or person or character that is really furry. Like Bigfoot, for example. Or Bigfoots, as we call them in the plural. Or Phoebe. Or, or Big Feet. Bigfoots. <laughs> big Feet. It's Bigfoots. It's Bigfoots. Uh, <laughs> all right. So the sea people, that would be like mermaids and sea serpents. The undead Vampires, zombies, ghasts, ghouls, ghosts. Um, humanity, that's us and you, presumably. Hopefully. <laughs> we don't know who's watching this video. Maybe there's some vampires watching it. Uh, um, the subterranean dwellers. People who live underground. Your like mole the people. Mole people. Uh, certain big purple worms <laughs> that can <laughs> talk. Uh, next up, we've got... The winged, winged folk. folk. That would be any creature that flies with wings, like gargoyles or dragons are winged folk. Um, the, who else has wings? The, oh, I mean, all sorts of creatures. Yeah, but not every winged creature is a member of the winged folk, because the next up we've got the fae, That's or true. the fairies. They're the eighth component of the octagon. And an octagon, by the way, is an eight-sided figure. Like you a, missed, you left one out. Who witches and wizards. Oh, witches and of wizards. Of course. Yeah. Like, uh, Hello. Gandalf and <laughs> we have a sorcerer in one of our books. But basically, the point of this is like, as we collaborate, we are trying to 
I mean, really, honestly, this book started from different things that we loved and figuring out a way we could tell a story where we could put in as many of them as possible, like the books that we loved reading when we were your age, but updated for now. Um, so we've got comic book references in there, which we both love. We've got lots of mysteries and sleuthing and potions. And a very depressed elevator. <laughs> a very depressed elevator. Um, and, you know, so when you're collaborating, I think that's where it starts, right? Is like figuring out the like the sort of common vision and goal that you have and then trying to um, it's never about like forcing the other person to do exactly what you want like usually if you disagree when you're coming up with a story you end up having to come up with a third option right and right now in this weird time where we're talking to each other by video instead of talking to you in person at your school you guys are probably talking to each other too via video right and it could be I believe that if it's like when I was in school sometimes you're collaborating yourselves sometimes you're working on projects together you might even write stories together uh, at least I hope you are. and Or read each other's fan fiction. If any of you write, um, you know, fan fiction for your favorite stories. Mm -hmm. Or you sometimes maybe maybe you've already made up like some collective worlds together um, that you could write stories in. But it is definitely a fun way to, um, I think, use the technology. Like, you know, even now when we collaborate with people who aren't each other, that's how we do it. Um, so yeah. how did we write this book together? Gwenda came up with the original idea of she wanted to write a story about hotel detectives, which sounds goofy, and I'm not sure they ever existed. They did. But in great big hotels, <laughs> used to be, a hundred years ago, they would have detectives. Probably more even. <laughs> they would have detectives on staff, just like they have chefs on staff, just like they have bell bellhops on staff. I don't know why great big hotels had detectives. Because rich people were constantly losing things or getting things stolen or accidentally um, committing crimes that they needed covered up by the hotel. I think, I think most of this only <laughs> happened in movies about hotel detectives and not in real life. I mean, art imitates life. <laughs> so we've got a hotel detective, or a pair of them actually, in our book at... Three? Well, if you count Sophia. No, if you count Ivan. Oh, you're talking about the kids. I'm talking about the kids. The kids are the detectives that... Right. There are three detectives. Are our detectives. Young detectives in our, um, in our books. Uh, there's Ivanos Ledoit, whose parents are the official uh, hotel detectives. There's uh, Sofia Gutierrez, whose mother is in charge of all the... Basically in charge of the hotel. And her father is the chief of security. And finally... Stephen, Stephen Lawson, Lawson <laughs> who is the new character. He's a kid that moves from Chicago to New York when his dad becomes chef at the Hotel New Harmonia. And he's the viewpoint. He's the he's the viewpoint character with which through which we learn all about this world because he doesn't know about it himself at the start of the books. Yep. Um, and so what would be your big advice to uh, these kids on collaborating and how to do it successfully? Well, first off, you have to respect each other's ideas and you have to bounce off each other. Sometimes your idea that you come up with is not absolutely the best, but your collaborator will be able to tweak it. She'll be able, she or he, um, or they, will be able to um, say yes and and then add on like, actually, anytime you collaborate, that's a great phrase to remember. Never say no, never say but, say yes and, add to it, put more to it. Uh, ring changes on that. If you and like. um, my other suggestion is also, especially when you're working with other people, and I think this is true of yourself too, um, is to give yourself permission to have bad ideas. Oh, yeah. um, a lot of the best solutions and good ideas, especially when you're working on stories with other people, um, you know, get prefaced with, um, in the room, it's a joke almost of, uh, you know, not this, because this is terrible, but something like this. And sometimes the thing is terrible, but it's a step towards something else. So, I mean, I think part of it too, is to treat it like a, like you're a little bit like play, um, until you get to what, you know, feels right and make sure that both the people or as many people are as in the collaboration are having fun with it um and then of course sadly any story that you write involves thinking i'm You're wearing backwards. my let me oh. overthink this t-shirt um which is basically my my life motto but just as a tip for your writing and any projects that you guys do i mean you may not think of yourself as a writer 
But if you're someone who has stories to tell, you could be. Um, and if you like to read stories, um, you know, that's certainly a step in the right direction. Um, but the biggest thing that, you know, the biggest part of the writing process besides actually typing is just thinking about your story a lot. Mm -hmm. Which for me means laying on the couch and putting my hand, putting my wrist on the back of my head like this and go, oh, oh, I am creating. <laughs> I'm creating. And then she comes and makes me get off the couch and actually type. And the, oh. That means that we've 15 minutes is left. Boom. Right, <laughs> no, that went crazy. Right. All right. Let's, <laughs> we, uh, I guess that's a we'll wrap, wrap up. it up. We hope that you uh, enjoy the book and that, we you hope that you learned something out of this or at least stayed awake. And um, learned a lot about our pets. And we um, hope that eventually everything is more or less back to normal and we don't talk to each other through screens all the time. Yeah. You guys stay safe and stay sane. Bye. Bye.